Hi there, guys and girls. I just wanted to do a review of a movie I just saw, Joker 2. Now, this movie is... I don't know. I've been waiting a long time for this movie. I loved the first one. Um, but I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It blows my mind. I have a lot of people uh, I watch on YouTube, reviewers, Jeremy Jan, Snarky J, you know, Critical Drinker. I love these people. I normally always agree with their opinions on films. But I just I just can't on Joker 2. I went and saw Joker 2 and absolutely loved it. And I feel like people are looking at the movie the wrong way. Now, firstly, I want to say the first, the first Joker movie, right... Um, the idea, the idea is that it's not supposed to be the Joker as we know it. It's sure it's based on him. He puts the clown makeup on, he dances in the suit. I don't know, right? He has a funny laugh. You know, he has traits, but this is a different joke. This is a more serious look at someone who is based on a, a pre-existing character, but done in a more serious way. Okay. So... The first movie, and I, I really loved it because, you know, he is, you know, he is a loser. <laughs> Basically, he lives with his mum. You know, he's got mental health issues and they, he has to bath her and stuff. And <laughs> I'm getting Bad Boy Bubby vibes <laughs> for anyone who's, any Aussie who's ever seen Bad Boy Bubby. Yeah, check that out. That's a crazy movie. Actually, is it handy? Maybe I can, uh, it's not handy. Sorry, it's behind the second row. Anyway, um, <clears throat> yeah, so he is a character who clearly has mental health problems. And in the first movie, they show us, you know, he does these clown jobs. It's all he can do. And he has to see uh, some sort of state. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Some sort of community doctor, I guess you could say, and they give him medication. And when they give him medication, he's Arthur Fleck. He's just a everyday sort of nobody, right? Now, something happens in the film where they say they're not going to give him medication anymore. This changes him in the first movie. Once he stops taking the medication, the Joker persona comes out. So, when he's not on medication, and this is very important, he is Joker. So, the first movie builds and builds and builds. It builds, it shows us the character, then, you know, goes off the meds, and then he goes to sort of the Joker persona, right? He kills the guys on the train. Reference to Death Wish there, by the way. Um, <clears throat> which I think is... It's... <sighs> the movie's telling us something. Like, it's telling us two things, right? He's off the medication. They fuck with a woman. They clearly like harassing her. Maybe they're going to do the, you know, grape. Not grape, but, you know, the thing that's like grape. They're probably going to try and do that to her. They're harassing her, right? And, you know, they're drunk. They're like, you know, businessmen. And then he does the thing where he just laughs. Because <laughs> he's got this disorder where he can't... Sometimes he just laughs out loud. And so they think, well, what the fuck are you laughing at? You know, they come over, what the fuck are you laughing at? They beat the shit out of him, right? But, but at this point in the film, this is the second time he's been beaten. And now he's off the medication and he's been given a gun by someone and he kills them all. Bang, bang, bang. Well, bang, bang. Chases the last guy down. Bang, bang. Kills them, right? And part of me loved the fact that he stood up for himself. I think more people should. Do you know what I mean? But the other thing that they're telling us is <laughs> you can't just go around killing people either. Do you know what I mean? So it goes to show that some people clearly need to be medicated because they'll jump to a psychotic sort of behavior. And this is the thing. He has like two, two personalities. You know, he's like schizophrenic. And so, by the time you get to the end of the movie, the tension just builds and builds and builds and builds and builds. And then you get to the where he's on the Murray Frank, Franklin show with De Niro. And, like, he's even nervous. He's, like, shaking. Like, do you know what I mean? Because, like, he loves Murray. But Murray invites him on the show to make fun of him. 
And this is something that he points out. He points out that he killed the guys on the train and that makes him mad. And then he says, you're just like them. You what? just vi invited me on the show. Laugh at my video. Make fun of me. You just wanted to laugh at me and make fun of me. Do you know what I mean? And then immediately, if you watch the first movie, uh, De Niro deflects. Oh, so you think that's okay. So he deflects away from the criticism, but the criticism is correct. That's why he invites him on the show. He wants to treat him like a joke. Um, this is a, a thing you see on the internet a lot these days. People try and uh, go after people and make fun of them, make them out to be stupid or a clown or a moron, you know, and they think it's funny to, like, um, insinuate that people are a certain way or this or that, you know, when some people clearly have mental health issues. Do you know what I mean? And that's what the mo first movie was about, and that's why it was so great. You get what you fucking deserve. Bang. Do you know what I mean? And part of me is like, yes... Yes. There's another part of me that's like, well, he's just a TV show host. Do you know what I mean? Um, and that's what the whole point of the first movie was. Okay. And I wanted to recap it because I, I feel like it's important going into the second movie. Okay. So the movie ends. Everyone loves it. It makes a billion dollars. Now, a lot of people, the, the criticism I was, the criticisms I was hearing mostly for the second film, uh, they didn't mean to make a sequel. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. The director hates like comic book fans and incels. That's why he makes fun of them. Uh, third one, like um, he goes back to being the the, the loser character from the first movie. Um, what's the other one I was thinking of? Uh, they're the main the main criticism. There's a few others, but they escape me from at the moment. And here's the thing. You can argue, sure, they didn't need to make a sequel. You can watch that movie and be content. Bang, that's it, right? But the second movie continues on the character and, like, the what's going on psychologically with the character. So, the thing is, yeah, you can argue that and say, oh, they didn't need to do that. And the argument that Todd Phillips, the director, hates in cells and comic book fans... It doesn't mean shit. So what? Do you know what I mean? Like, and here's the thing. In the first movie, Arthur Fleck is a loser. You know, he does live with his mum and all that. And he, you know, he has mental health, he has problems. Do you know what I mean? He, he, there's not a lot he can do. And he gets beaten, he gets treated like shit. Do you know what I mean? Like, he, he is downtrodden, like, right? The problem that a lot of people have is that the movie ends, he builds up to Joker, he shoots the TV show host on the, on the air. This movie starts and it reverts the character and, and revert. I sort of don't want to use the word revert, but the character goes back to being the pre Joker character from the first movie to the Arthur Fleck from the first movie. And that's, and there's a reason for it. It's really, really quite basic. And the movie shows us this. And not one person on YouTube has said this. I've watched so many videos of people hating on the movie. No one's pointed out. I've watched people, a few reviews of people liking the movie. No one has said it. Not one person. When he's in jail, he's medicated. And this is an argument I have with my friend. He kept saying, it doesn't matter. I'm like, it fucking does. It changes the whole mental side of the character when he's medicated he is not a psycho he is not psychotic he's just got his problems he's got the laugh he's like you know he's he's kind of weird he doesn't know how to talk to girls like you know he's you know wants a girlfriend but you know doesn't know how to do that stuff do you know what i mean when he's medicated he's not psychotic he's normal when he's off meds he goes Joker on like the the end of the first movie. You get what you fucking deserve. Bang, right? So this movie it start it starts with an animation of um, which was great by the way because it's a Warner Brothers movie, and Warner Warner Brothers uh, movies. I'm a big fan of Warner movies. You know, not so much the gaming division, but anyway, um, Warner Movies, yeah, it starts off with a Looney Tunes animation. The, the Joker and my shadow. Like, I don't understand how people don't get it. The shadow is the, the Joker persona trying to take over. That's the dark side of him. 
you know, and he fights against this persona. And once he unlocked it from the first movie, once he was Joker from the first movie, he's now haunted by it in the second movie. So the fact that he's on medication, you get through the animation and it kind of like sets a tone. It's it's plants a few seeds and so it kind of reminds us what happened in the end of the first movie, right? And even when the cops come in that animation, the police show up and what do they do? What is the first thing the police do after Joker kills the guy on the air in the animation at the start of the second movie? Do they just arrest him? No, they beat the shit out of him. Like, every other person has. Like, all the people on the street have, you know, the kids that take his sign in the first movie, you know. They just beat him, you know. And then the movie starts, and it goes into the actual film. And um, we see, this is where we see this key scene, and I looked for it, and it's nowhere online. I guess it's, I couldn't find it. Um, of him taking the medication, a cup, take your medication, Fleck. You know, and he takes he has like three tablets, like two big tablets that are capsule from memory, like yellow tablets, I remember. You know, and then they watch him take the medication and then they check his mouth afterwards. You know, they check, he opens his mouth to see that he's not, hasn't put them under the tongue and blah, 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 right? So he is taking the medication. And this is important because... Something in my head there. There we go. Um, later on, uh, a line comes up that I think counter counteracts this. So he's medicated in jail, and that's why he goes back to being normal Arthur Fleck. And they keep saying to him, Hey, Arthur, got a joke for us. Hey, Arthur, got a joke for us. And he says nothing, because he is not Joker. Do you know what I mean? He's Arthur. So, what's going on is, the people in the jail are fucking with him, and he knows it. And he's positioning himself strategically so I actually think he's smarter than they think I actually think even though he's got these problems when he's on the medication I feel like he gets kind of a bit smarter he get, it controls the emotional side of him and then he is like um, more relaxed and can think things through I feel like he is manipulating the guards in the jail He's manipulating the social worker that comes to see him, that wants to get him out. You know, his lawyer or whatever. He's manipulating everybody. Then we get introduced to the Lee character, Harley Quinn. Um, they call her Lee in the movie. And this is the Gaga character. And she's great. She's perfect in this movie. Not just for the musical talents. I actually thought the acting was really good. You know, act, the acting from everybody in this movie is, like, top tier, man. Even if you hated this movie, the acting is so good. The performances are amazing. The, and, it, and he maintained the look of the movie. It looks so good, this movie. You know, um, oh, it just looks excellent. The cinematography, I love it. It looks amazing. So then we get to, we, we meet the, the lead character. And, you know, the guard's like, I'll tear up a meeting with you. Maybe you'll even get to have a poke or something. Like, he's like that, right? This guard, you know? And and it, it, the movie kind of play, um, makes him out to be okay. He even asks for a smoke. He gives him a smoke. The guard gives him a smoke. He's like, oh, this guard's sort of looking after him. And, I, and to me, I was thinking, I bet he's bad. I was watching the movie and I was thinking, I was looking at that guard thinking, I bet he's really bad. And he's just doing all the things he needs to do to get a cigarette or to appease this guy's ego as being, I'm a great guard and I'm a great guy. But as soon as you go against it, mate, the tide will turn. And basically, that is what happens. That is what happens. Um, so, for a while, it goes through the whole system and then he gets his, court, his day in court. It builds and builds and builds, you know, and... Um, he, but right before court, um, the Lee character gets let into his cell and she's like, oh, I bribed the guards to let me in or something. And, you know, they fuck. And even that, you know, it's, the scene's awkward. He doesn't know how to, you know, be with a woman. He's like, even his sex motion is like weird and he... He asks her to help him put his thigo in her thigo, and and it's like the movie's telling. He just ha he just has no clue when it comes. 
in the first movie, he wanted the girlfriend. He couldn't get her. He wanted her. And then this movie, she comes after him. She's more dominant, um, the lead character. She goes after Joker. And she goes after Joker because she's obsessed with him, right? And she keeps telling him, you're Joker. You're the best. You're the blah, blah, blah. You know, and, and this is all important, right? So then they fuck, you know. She says, I'll be at the trial. It, t- it turns out she told a few fibs. She wasn't actually in jail with him. She committed herself to this section of jail that where he was to get near him to because she was obsessed with him. That's what it was about. So the the movie title Joker Folle Adieu in French means actually um, the madness of two, and that's that's what it's about. They're both crazy, and the movie even tells you that she's a pyromaniac. She lights the jail on fire. My even my friend he was a bit like. Oh, I can't believe that she was just able to light the jail on fire. She's a pyromaniac and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, this, everyone's smoking. Like, I don't know. She, you know, they probably weren't paying attention. They're probably supposed to watch it and they didn't. You know what I mean? So this wasn't a problem for me. But yeah, she starts a fire, you know, um, and they go to escape. They try to escape and they run away. And you, and this is where you get some of the, the musical numbers. And, and this is, oh, that's that was the other thing I was trying to say that, that uh, people had a problem with the film, that it was a musical. And let me tell you something. I don't really like musicals. There's a few. Excuse me. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, Sweeney Todd and the Demon Barmer of Fleet Street. I like the only musicals I like. Every I don't even like Sound of Music. Yep, I know. You know, I just... I Musicals I, I'm really strict with. This one was great. Because the songs were short. And they were an emotional extension of what is going on in the film, of what the character is thinking or feeling or whatever, right? And so, yeah, they try to escape. They don't escape. Obviously, they get pu- pulled back in and that. Then we get to his trial. He has his first day in the court. You know, trial's going okay. She's she's probably going to get him off. And, um, and here's where I'm not entirely sure... So right bef- at the scene where he has sex with Harley, she says, you have to stop taking your medication because she wants him to be Joker. And he already says, I already have, right? And then we get to the court scene. I don't know how, though. I don't know if he's lying or if it's true. I think it's. I think he's lying. He, we get to the court scene. He, she's going to get him off. That's her job. She's pretty sure she can get him off as being, you know... The sister made him be what he was, sort of thing. She probably would have got him off, the, his lawyer. He fires her. He's like, nah, you know, you're not doing this right. So you could make the argument that he actually is off his medication at that time because he's not thinking right, right? And then he he wears the suit, the Joker suit, the makeup. And the reason why I think he's actually still on his medication is it's a different Joker. So in this film, in Joker 2, the Joker from the first movie is not in this movie at all. If you think about the confidence level of Joker from the first movie, you get what you fucking deserve. Bang! Do you know what I mean? If you think about when he is Joker and he just doesn't care and he doesn't care about the wrist and does whatever he wants, this Joker, even when he's got the suit on in court... Sure, he's all confident in that, and he's he's putting on a funny accent when he's speaking to Gary Puddles, and, um, and the thing is that scene is so pivotal in the film because when Gary says "You scared me," I was your friend, you always were nice to me, and blah blah blah, it sort of ruins that for him because he's putting on a song and dance for like everybody that wants Arthur Fleck to get let out. Like there's this big media circus outside, right? They all sort of love him, right? Because everything that he influenced in the first movie. He's an influencer, right? There's a lot of people that like, and you will hear uh, quotes, you'll even hear, you get what you fucking deserve towards the end of the movie. You'll hear, you'll hear um, some of the guys who were driving the car say that, like he has influenced people like big time. And so when this guy isn't influenced by him and is scared by him and he thinks, the, the, the Joker character he became was great, he sort of loses his shit. He gets mad. Do you know what I mean? There's other times in the courtroom scene where he even fantasizes about killing the judge and you see it, right? And that's because, and this is what makes me think he's still taking his medication, 
Um, if he was Joker, he would really just do it. But he's fantasizing about it. Just the way he fantasizes about the umbrellas being multiple uh, different colors at the start of the movie, but they're not. They're drab and they're black. And so he has, yeah, he fantasizes about killing the judge, you know, but obviously it doesn't happen. And that's why I believe that he is medicated throughout this whole movie. Do you know what I mean? And that's why he can't be Joker. So I like what this movie does because he wants to be Joker, but he can't because of the pills that they make him take. And then he goes, he plays uh, all the people to get to the court to try and get let off. But then two things happen that, that ruin his whole fucking plan. Gary Puddles saying that you scared the fuck out of me and blah, blah, blah. And that sort of ruins it for him. It brings him down. Mate, he doesn't want to be let out then, like, sort of thing. He, he, he sort of convinced himself that he's right until he says that stuff. And that, that messes with him, right? The second thing is when he gets up and he says, I'm not Joker. I don't want to be Joker. And disavows Joker. The Harley character just gets up and walks out of court. After saying, I'll be there the whole time. She can't take... She wants Joker. She can't take that he doesn't want to be Joker. Because he's medicated. When you're medicated, you're a different person. You're not a... There's some people out there that just have to take their meds. If they don't, they become a different people. Like, it's just how it is. This is how the world is. Right? And that's why I believe that this is a really good movie. I, and... I was just shocked that the amount of people that are hating on this. Some of the some of the hatred is just people trying to blow their channels up. They saw what happened with Star Wars with Nerd Roddick and Ge Geeks and Gamers and all of them. They all hated on you know Star Wars and now they're superstars, right? And a lot of people come along, they see that and they try the same shit when the next one happens, right? And so some of the big channels are already shitting on Joker. I think some of those people just join in to try and boost their channels. I'm not saying their criticisms aren't sure you can hate the film. But some of them are phony. Some of them just don't care. They don't give a shit about the movie. They just want to build their YouTube channel or something, right? It's just how some people are. So that's why I like the second Joker movie. Because I just thought it was excellent. And, you know, I already said spoilers, but... The end of the movie gets killed, right? The guard walks out. Because... You know, after he humiliates that fat guard humiliates him in court. Remember I said he's playing him for the fool? He he has this chance up in court and he goes, those fat guards in prison, blah, blah, blah. And he just has his, he takes his chance and just goes for it, right? And then when they get him back in the jail, first thing they do is you drag him in there and he's laughing. Ah, you know, and then they bash him. Ra um, possibly grape him. You know? Um, they... You know when the trial's over, you know, so he's he's pronounced guilty in the trial. When he's, As soon as he's pronounced guilty, bomb goes off. The influenced people I talk about, they break him out. They throw him into a car, you know, and they're driving around. And one guy gets run over, and that's when you hear that line, oh, well, he got what he fucking deserved, you know what I mean? He has influenced these people, right? But then he gets caught at the stairs... You know, where he did the dancing in the first movie, d dancing like that. You know, he's, um, he wants that feeling again and he gets locked up again. And that's when we get to the end of the film and yeah, so the guard's like, keep up with me, Fleck or something, but he keeps walking. I'm like, uh oh, <laughs> this is the whole, oh, whoops. I didn't know there was another inmate in there with a shiv. I didn't know, you know what I mean? And that's exactly what happens. He gets shivved. Like that, Fleck goes down, looks like he basically dies. And the guy that shivved him even, you see him do this uh, in the blur, in the background. And that's obviously a reference to the Dark Knight, you know, cutting your mouth to get the scars and that. And a lot of people are mad about that. I think it's just a little homage, a little reference. I don't think they're literally saying, he's the Joker now. Some people have thought that. I mean, even I thought that for a second, and I'm like, no, I don't think they do that. I think he just likes to have little homages and references. But that's basically the way the movie ends, you know, and um, I just thought it was excellent. I thought this was an excellent movie. It continues on the psychology of the character from the first movie, and like I said, 
most people have a problem with him because as soon as he becomes Joker, they think that the movie two is going to be Joker. I get revenge on everybody. And then he goes around and does everything that the other Jokers do. Big elaborate plans and blowing up stuff and Batman and blah, blah, blah. Do you know what I mean? This is not what this is about at all. This is a totally independent storytelling of Joker. It always has been. And it's actually one thing that bothered me in the first movie. I liked when... Oh, who was that guy? He, he said, stay away from Thomas Wayne. He was like his butler or helper or something. And he beats him in the bathroom. But then later, he even goes to his mansion and that. I didn't like that. I, th I thought they should have just stopped at the beating and that's it. Trying to introduce that Bruce Wayne's a kid. He's seven years old. He goes to the mansion and sees him and all this shit. I didn't like that in the first movie. I didn't like there being a connection to Batman. Just keep it as Joker. So I can forgive it though because it was like a small criticism from the first movie. But that's just basically how it is. He is totally... It's, it's totally nothing to do with Batman. This could be a different... Well, it is a different Joker or Joker... You know, it's not the Joker we know. Do you know what I mean? And I just thought it was excellent. It was excellent. The, like I said, the um, the performances are so good. The the storytelling, the the fact that it continues on the psychology of the character, like he's playing them at the start. He's just playing them until he can get his day in court. Then he turns and like sort of fucks with them. Do you know what I mean? Knowing that they're going to fuck with him. And I'm thinking, he's doing that on purpose. So they bash him. And the next day in court, he looks all beaten and stuff. But that wasn't necessarily the way they went. But um, I'm like, he's he's becoming smart. He's like learning. And he's he's playing them. But the pro the thing that undoes him is the, the friend, Gary, and the Lee character. She is, you know, she is, uh, you know, mad as well. And she's like manipulating him to go and be that guy that he was in the first movie and he just isn't anymore because of the medication it's so basic take your meds do you know what i mean i'm surprised like i said not one reviewer has pointed this out and you know like i said my friend gave me the argument that's it's such a small thing i'm like it's not it affects the whole mental psychology of the character the whole basis of him is when he's medicated, he's Arthur. When he's not medicated, he's Joker. That's it. Anyway, I loved the movie. I thought it was excellent. I can't believe my movie, my favorite movie reviewers all hate this movie. They all fucking hate it. I can't believe it. Anyway, that's my review. I've said it. I'm going to tweet this at them. I hope they watch it. They probably won't, but you know. That's why I think it's an excellent movie. Sure, they didn't need to make a sequel, but when you have a movie that makes a billion dollars, they're going to make a sequel. That's just how it is. I'm actually really glad that Todd Phillips continued on the cinematography. I thought it was excellent that Walking Phoenix did a sequel. Something that my friend said to me, he never does sequels. He never does. And I'm like, so? Like, who cares? I don't... You know, I, I found that interesting, but, like, I don't care if he's never done a sequel. He did this one. He must have really liked the character, or they just threw a shitload of money at him. Either way, he didn't find the performance in. He gave it everything he had, and it was excellent for it. Anyway, if you don't want to see it at the cinemas, I would highly recommend checking it out when it comes on streaming service or 4K or Blu-ray or DVD, whatever, because I think it's an excellent movie if you like the psychology of the character in the first movie and you're okay with him coming back to be arthur fleck after joker you know um and it telling that story or what happens next you're gonna like the sequel so anyway thanks for watching guys and uh i'll see you next time peace out